Welcome to the She Age. This is Hina Rakeja from Hindustan Times and HT City, Hindustan Times and Grantham present the She Age Awards brings to you this web session wherein we have a discussion on challenges to changes traveling in the She Age. Our guest today need no introduction. We have the versatile actor Bhumi Pednekar and the ever inspirational Dr. Malvika Ayer. Hello, Bhumi. Hello, Dr. Ayer. Hi, Anna. Hello, Dr. Ayer. Extremely excited to be in this chat with you. Thank you so much, Bhumi. So lovely to see you. And thank you, Hena, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have both of you here as we move into the she age. They say that um, history is all about his story. But as we move forward towards the future, I think it is the women who need to write their own stories and go forward. And if we have to write our own stories, I think there's nobody better than you two here to talk about every shackle that you have broken to come today to a point that you are inspirational for not just young girls, but women of all ages. So we'll start with you, Bhumi. So Bhumi, tell us a little about um, the challenges that you faced when you were starting out in the industry. And now today, when you look back at them and you think that how you have overcome them, what is it that comes to your mind? You know, for starters, um, I'm not from a film family, you know, so I did not ever know how am I going to get to live my dream because all I ever wanted since I was very young was to be an actor. Um, where I got lucky was the family that I was born in. You know, they gave me good education. They created opportunities for me. They were my backbone. They supported me, you know, through everything. When I went and I told my parents that I want to be an actor, they helped me take that path. You know, they didn't know how, but, you know, they were just there supporting me. So I feel um, that kind of made the journey easy. I started working at a very young age and I just, I remember... I was all of 18 when I started working with Virus and I had no idea, but I just, I just had this vision in my head that one day I'm going to have the life that I have today and I'm living it. And I feel so fortunate because, you know, I did not give up. I kept going, I kept going and I had a very unconventional start. And I feel like because I started with the film like Dam Laga Ke Haisha, it created so many more opportunities for me. It kind of gave me clarity on the kind of cinema that I want to do. It kind of gave me the confidence that I cannot walk the uncommon, the, I cannot walk the common path. You know, I was very clear that I need to make, that I need to create a space for myself and I need to leave behind a legacy of films. And every decision that I've taken you know in the last 10 years from the day I started working has kind of led me to be where I am today and um, definitely there were struggles you know when you start off as a young actor you know you don't have the kind of fun you don't have the kind of um, you know exposure you don't know um, you know how to wear how to style yourself uh, you know you you don't have a team helping you out you don't know if this film decision that you're taking is right or wrong. I did not know if I'm taking the right choices. You know, I did not know if I was making the right decisions. But I feel like there was some energy that was guiding me and that energy has got me to here. You know, uh, obviously when you're starting off uh, new, you know, um, you're confused. You know, I was a confused young adult. I wasn't sure if I'm pretty enough to be an actor. You know, I wasn't sure if I, I was the only thing that I had confidence on was my talent, you know? So I was like, you know what? I have never seen a, a normal Indian girl being represented on screen. And I wanted that for myself. I felt like, you know, there's been such a stereotype for female actors in our country. And I wanted to break that stereotype. So I feel like um, once I've, well, after them, I think it was all amazing. But before that, you know, like anybody struggling, anybody starting off their career, there were ups and downs. But 
they've all beautiful experiences and from these beautiful experiences we go on to dr ayer you and the kind of experiences that you have had uh, can actually rattle anybody um, at the age of 13 you had you faced a, a grenade blast and uh, you know but you have never ever let that part of your life interfere with what you wanted to be you went on did your phd uh when you now look back how do you think about the challenges that you have overcome um i think uh, i like what bumi said that you know despite uh, the challenges that kept coming uh, i just wanted to never give up and i think i have i resonate with that i come from a family i had a similar support just like you bumi my family my mother she is my pillar of strength and everyone in my family i think that was very important for me once uh, you know i tick the box that i have the support that i needed i think from there uh, i refused to go back i have a couple of milestone achievements i think the first was uh, because i was bedridden for 18 months i uh, didn't walk i couldn't do anything both my hands and legs were completely bandaged uh, after the grenade exploded so i think i almost lived 6 um, to 7 months in the hospital and then it was just being bedridden for 18 years so then uh, i made this choice that um, i needed to i just cannot keep lying down i know that i cannot do anything from uh, my bed and i was a trained dancer i was a trained kathak dancer and i could never dance again i couldn't do so many things that i love but i realized that my life wouldn't end here and i just cannot stop here and the decision that i made you know fight um, we need to fight for our lives you know fight and you survive and you know if you surrender you are wiped out i think that's what uh, i told myself when i was in the hospital so the two milestones for me uh, that happened after this accident first was my uh, decision to enroll uh, for my 10th grade i couldn't join a school because uh, no school would admit me because just 3 months left for board exams and i had missed out on all of 9th grade and everything so that decision i think uh, completely changed my life and the marks that i got i think that was just bonus but i was not expecting because it was very new for me now to write exams without two hands so i needed a writer and i needed to dictate diagrams and calculations that was very difficult but again never give up so uh, i got a state rank right? i got a 97 percent and i think um, the next day <laughs> after that um, i uh, just treat the, i have never scored that much even with my hands honestly so with those with that score uh, you know being my story being shared everywhere after that and i think um, that was the year that was the moment i realized that i'm never going back so no challenge that came after that you know it doesn't matter uh, whatever i mean i think i have crossed the biggest barrier so i will go on from there and the second milestone for me was i think in the year 2013 um i was going about living a normal teenager's life studying and doing my things having my friends and having the usual issues a, a teenager would have but then i um, spoke at a public platform i think my first public speech uh, was at a tedx platform and that is when i uh, i think i decided that it is enough i have had enough uh, of you know shying away from my disability or trying to hide my disability from the world i am going to go out and speak and that talk i think uh, is what made me today that i am a motivational speaker and you know from tedx to being able to speak at the un i think that journey for me is what really matters so i think with these experiences like bumi shared these beautiful experiences that you um, get after you know you've made that first choice you know you have to step out and face your fears i don't think there's ever any looking back after that and i'm only glad that these experiences made me uh, a stronger person and from now it is only you know onwards and how what next year or what next is going to be in my life you know i get goosebumps as you tell me about your tale because then when we think about what we are doing in life it's like absolutely nothing as compared to what you have achieved and in fact it is this never give up courage that we also see in in you bhumi i think uh, you know even though you were constantly put at the uh, at the edge of accepting roles that came to you as filtered you made the best of them bhumi and uh, you know i mean even today like starting from um, erectile dysfunction to lavender marriages i mean the the scope is so wide that one can only just go on and on talking about it but 
somewhere you put a, you drew a line and you said that okay i am an actor but i am also going to be a conscious human being so from caring about the environment to caring about um, you know people during the time of covid wherein you have helped so many lives i know personally that you have done it for so many people who were you were trying to help um what made you motivated to do this hanata firstly thank you so much for recognizing my efforts uh during a very very sad and disheartening period of the second wave um you know i feel my films have made me a more empathetic person um because i was you know i lost my father when i was very young i be i lost him to cancer and i'd seen him battle two years of a disease that was it was a very tough time for our family you know we were very young i had no idea i feel you are always a sum total of your life experiences you know because of the hardships that i saw as a young adult you know i started working very young um just the amount of ambition that was instilled in us you know the movies that i've done the films that i have experienced See, because when you're doing a film you're living that character and the kind of person that i am i really go into method i really live that character's life and if you see my filmography all these women have been so empowering and inspiring you know they are from different walks of life their goals and ambitions are different their struggles are different but they all are winners you know so i think i think because i've played such fantastic and phenomenal women like you know through my career Uh, I'm 11 films old, and through these 11 films, I think it has just made me more compassionate. It has made me more empathetic as a human being. Uh, of course, a lot of my conscious decisions do come from what I saw growing up. You know, I saw my father really give back. You know, I saw my parents be very generous and kind. You know, even though they did not have like the world at their or uh, disposal but you know i i saw their intention you know so i feel like a lot of my compassion comes from them as well and um, i think since i was a child i was very clear that for me true success means that wherever i am in life i need to be able to give back you know if i am at this position and i can't make the most of this position by contributing towards making this world a better place then i don't deserve the success i don't deserve the success at all you know uh, and i feel like this is just the start of my career it is also just the start of my uh, humanitarian efforts and uh, you know i just and i speak about it often because i i, I feel like that we we need more people that are in places of power you know to have this attitude you know we need people to share we need people to be compassionate to care about each other you know we need people to just start being human again you know i really feel like the world is going towards a place where it's just about ourselves you know but we won't survive like that so i feel like and that's why i do the films that i do you know and uh, as i as i said earlier you know my films my cinema is also a way that i give back you know because i'm very clear that i want to play women that empower my gender i want to do films that empower any marginalized community in our country and uh, that is the kind of cinema i want to do and and you know this empowerment is so infectious that you know when women they see you portray such roles they feel that yes we can also overcome our challenges and do what we dream and desire and and i think uh, dr ayer you will also agree with it because uh, you know the kind of uh, motivational speeches the you know the talks that you gave i've heard some of them and and it really never shows anybody who is you know different from the society that okay i will not fit into this place um was was that also the thought behind you to give back to the society even though you know i uh, or did somewhere you feel that i haven't been the fortunate one and i should you know kind of then restrict myself um rightly said uh, hina i think um, this one day uh, my mom uh, and i we we are best of friends and uh, she uh, 
she was taking me to the college on the way back home uh, in our two wheeler uh, she was telling me that you know if uh, i go out and say that you know you should uh, you should be more courageous or you should not give up if i go say things like that maybe you will listen because you are my daughter but everybody may not listen or may not uh, connect with it but if you go and you know stand up and you go and say that you know don't give up in life or you know there is life even after the worst has happened to you people will listen to you because you have a lived experience so that is what i think really um, touched me when she said that to me and i think since then uh, i re- i think my research really helped me so that i was doing my masters at the time and then i took up my mphil and phd because i needed to do more research and of course uh, as a person with disability i have had my share of uh, you know facing a uh, societal discrimination because you know i'm a woman and i'm a woman with disability so you know there is double discrimination because of my gender and because of my disability and i remember the first time that i really cried bitterly was not because of my you know hands literally cut open or my legs cut open it was when uh, a few people in the hospital where i was admitted they were near my ward and they were saying things like uh, she is a uh, bechari in hindi since i was in rajasthan when the accident happened so they call me bechari ladki and they even said things like i'm a burden to my family or i've become a liability or you know she's never going to study again or who's going to marry her or so these were the remarks that were thrown at me at such an early age i was just 13 and i was very shocked when i heard those because no one in my home said all those things to me so i was scared and i asked my mom that are what they saying is that true is this what i have become and she said no this is not your reality maybe they are saying that but you need to stand up and we are with you to you know move forward so like whom he shared you know uh, giving giving back i think that is very important you know with the kind of role that we have i think it is very important to take that responsibility of giving back so for me i think she very beautifully defined the meaning of success that to her it is to give back and for me it is very similar i resonate with that for me success is the number of lives i have in, uh, i think influenced or inspired in a positive way i think that really matters to me and now it's become a full time job for me i wake up in the morning i read this thousands of messages every day people saying that i read your story if you didn't give up i won't give up either so that is my job i get to read these messages and then i get to go out there and speak to people that you know you should there's so much to life i actually almost died that day on the day of my accident i had lost 80% blood and my all the four main nerves were cut even the doctors had given up on me they said even actually there was no hope but i did i think it's a miracle that i survived so definitely i will not i refuse to waste this rebirth the second life that i have over the comments that somebody made that i am not good enough perhaps that i would want to make a difference rather just than you know for me i think this life is for everyone who has faced this kind of challenge and i think that is what it means for me to be an advocate for people with disabilities if i didn't have the kind of support i needed 20 years ago today no disabled person should you know hear from anybody that you know you are not good enough or you know you are you know, you are a liability and i think uh, i loved uh, you know both our success definitions i'm really glad that people uh, are uh, i and I, another thing that bumi talked about because of her movies people and it really impacts you know when i see i really consider representation in movies is a very big part and if i see a person with disability in a movie who is shown in an empowered way and not shown as a pit you know as a liability to their family i am very sure, i will feel very confident even i will feel that you know i see myself in the screen and the kind of movies i think her recent movie badhai do um, uh, that she uh, has been my dad was telling me when i told my dad that you know i'll be speaking to bumi she said that her recent movie is so empowering and you know it is something a very different subject and you know these are the kind of things that we need to work on and i think i'm very glad that she's you know creating awareness on such an important subject lovely to hear that and i'm sure bhumi would be equally happy to hear that wow. and um, yeah and going forward dr ayer what is it do you think that uh, women today need to do uh, to never give up and to continue to have the spirit of you know enabling each other rather than you know pulling each other down i think um, i like this quote it says empowered women empower women so i think that is what we need to do uh, 
and people with a growth mindset uh, i'm sure that all of us here are following our growth mindset i think that's what it means if we follow our growth mindset it only means that we are appreciative and encouraging of other people's success and we don't you know are we are not threatened by someone else's success that's what it means when uh, i feel that what it really means to be an empowered person and another thing i would want to share is uh, you could be anything in life and i think for me uh, i didn't wish that you know it was very easy for me to have the wishful thinking that i wish the accident went away or i wish i got my hands back or i wish i could walk like before or dance like before i don't think that's how life works but there is one thing we can wish for and become is to be resilient in life and if we have that if we are able i resilience is very simple it only really, um, makes us stronger to be able to cope any problem it doesn't mean that you know you wish for your problem i don't think problems are ever going away and bhumi that you shared about your father i am sure it must have been so difficult for you as a young girl to go through um, that kind of trauma i think you being a resilient person since then is perhaps what has given you these kind of uh, you know decisions and choices that you're making now so i think at a young age when we get this opportunity to be resilient in life i think there is no one who can stop us uh, moving forward very well said and bhumi would you uh, like to add something to that because if today a young girl comes up to you and says that you know i also want to have a career in films i want to be an actor or has it ever happened that you know some incident that touched your heart um you know um fortunately for me because of the films that i do i get a lot of love from my audience you know so just like you know thinking of my last outing with badhai do the impact that film had i i was honestly flabbergasted you know i remember waking up on saturday and going into my instagram and i think i had about 4000 messages it's never happened you know <laughs> it's never happened and that's when i realized that you know it is very important as dr ayar said that you know representation especially in cinema because cinema has such a huge impact on people you know it is that one source of messaging that reaches out to a mass audience you know that's why the politics of your film what you're trying to say your opinions in cinema are so so important um but i feel like to any young girl you know trying to not just make a career in acting just trying to make a career the first thing i would want to tell her well done you know and i would want to tell her that it's not going to be easy it's going to be very tough but your failure is only going to make you stronger your resilience is only going to make you stronger you know just keep at it keep going and i promise you you know there were times when i would feel disheartened you know disappointed you know i would sleep feeling like things are just not right and i'm not doing enough or you know i would just like not feel good about the way life was going but then i would wake up and i would be like you know what it's okay it's a bad day and maybe it's a bad time but this too shall pass and i'm not going to give up you know there was there's so much chatter when especially for women you know there are so many knows there are people always trying to pull you down there are people that are always going to tell you oh don't do this oh you know now you should get married oh if you don't have a kid by this age you will not it's my choice it's my body you know these are my life choices and my life choices cannot be driven by somebody else's happiness and somebody else's level of what's right or wrong it should only be driven by what i want so you know to all to any young girl you know if you are in school study hard you know um uh, create opportunities for yourself nobody is going to do it you have to do it for yourself you know don't ever feel like why don't i have the life that somebody else has always remember you can have it just work towards it you know have a vision have a dream and don't be hard on yourself i think something that we as women often do is and and it is also because of our source uh, uh, social conditioning right you know because we we've, we've grown up around stereotypes you know we've grown up around uh, gender jobs we've grown up thinking that oh this is how a woman should be 
but i think it is very important to have the right role models in your life it is very important to follow women that will em- women that would empower you you know and as dr ayer very rightly said as an empowered girl it is my responsibility to make sure that my ecosystem rises with me you know it is my responsibility to make sure that i give education to a child irrespective of their gender who maybe does not have access to it it is my responsibility to educate people around me and not just like school education but just knowledge you know speak up about what's right or wrong it can also just be a conversation that you have with somebody working at your house you know it is just about telling them that look create opportunities for your daughter you know that's the only way we we need to understand that especially in our ecosystem if we do not empower the marginalized people in our lives what's the point rightly said mohumi thank you so much for empowering us with your thoughts and thank you so much dr malvika ayer for empowering us with your story and your ideas and uh, congratulations to you both on uh, the she age award thank you. and looking forward to thank see you, you. Thank you.